Feifu and Her Friends was the 14th play by Cuban-American playwright Maria Irene Fornes, originally written and produced in 1977. It is known for its alternative staging and use of a solely female cast. Maria Irene Fornes, May 14, 1930 to October 30, 2018, was a Cuban-American playwright, theater director, and teacher who worked in off-Broadway and experimental theater venues in the last four decades of the 20th century. Her plays range widely in subject matter, but often depict characters with aspirations that belie their disadvantages. Fornes, who went by the name, Irene, one, received nine OB Theater Awards, two, in various categories, uh, and was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize in Drama for 1990. Plot. Feifu and her friends is set in New England in the spring of 1935. One, the story takes the audience through an amazing entire day beginning around noon and ending in the evening, it climaxes in a death scene. The play is split into three parts. It begins in the living room of Feifu's country house. Part two is set in four different areas of the house, the lawn, the study, the bedroom, and the kitchen. Fornes deconstructs the familiar stage, removing the fourth wall, and scenes are played in multiple locations simultaneously throughout the theater. The audience is divided into groups to watch each scene, then they rotate to the next set, as the scene is repeated until each group has seen all four scenes. Feifu and her seven female friends gather at Feifu's house to rehearse a presentation for their charity toward school education. Each character plays a role in this event. Before and after their rehearsal, the women interact with one another, and share their thoughts and feelings about life along with their personal struggles and societal concerns. One Fornes portrays these characters as real women, in a shift in her playwriting style to realism in setting, character, and situations. Action. Edit. The majority of the triggers begin with Feifu in her desire to express control over her friends. Her use of the gun and her overall organization of the rehearsal for the play places the other characters in positions of submission. Feifu has two sides according to Kelda Lynn Jordan the controlling trait and the motherly trait. 446-47 Feifu also criticizes herself and women in the play as being lesser than men, which also shows her preference for male traits. Jordan also comments on the meek stereotypical weakness of the other characters such as Paula, Sue, Christina, and Cindy. The only woman who stands against Feifu is Julia and this makes Feifu more aggressive toward her, leading her to kill the rabbit that symbolizes her loss of power and control. 458 The actions of the play demonstrate the daily power struggles of women in a society that is dominated by men. According to Robert Wilson, Feifu and her friends, challenges our preconceptions of life, and Julia's final wound in the end is, our own. Feifu, originally played by Rebecca Skull, one, the main character who has many male characteristics. She struggles against her femininity with her relationship with her offstage husband, Philip. Fornes depicts her as always seeking control. 450 Feifu adds humor with her game where she shoots at her husband and toys around the danger of not knowing if the gun is loaded. Her biggest scene is during part 3 in her confession with Julia. Feifu states, I need him Julia. I need his touch. I need his kiss. I need the person he is. I am frightened and I am overbearing. One, the weakness and truth of her character comes out to the audience. In the end, she shoots and kills a rabbit. At the same time, the shot affects her friend Julia, who mysteriously dies from a head wound. Cindy, originally played by Gwendolyn Brown, one, one of the first characters introduced in the country house. She was present when Julia was paralyzed the day a hunter almost shot her a year prior. The majority of her actions are with her friend, Christina including their conversation together in the study of part two. In this act, Cindy describes a dream she had of taking control while a young doctor attempted to fondle her. 1. Christina, originally played by Carolyn Hearn, one, also one of the first characters introduced in part one. Her character appears disturbed and confused by the actions of Feifu and must suck on an ice cube with bourbon to relax. She practices her French with Cindy in Part 2. 1. Julia, originally played by Margaret Harrington, one, her character is set in a wheelchair for the whole play. She became unconscious when a hunter shot a deer that was in the same area she was. She had convulsions and suffered a concussion with a bleeding wound on her forehead. Cindy believes there is no reason for Julia's paralysis since she was never hit by the bullet. Julia does have scar in her brain called petite mal that causes her to blank out. Julia has her own scene in part 2 of the bedroom where she has mild hallucinations. One, her actions display a submissiveness to men. Julia states, if a man commits an evil act, he must be pitied. The evil comes from outside him, through him and into the act. 
Woman generates the evil herself. Her head also moves as if she has been slapped, which shows Forness' use of an invisible male character. Julia does not give in to Feifu's control during their confrontation in Part 3, but she dies in the end from an unknown wound. It is revealed that Julia can walk when she chooses to. Emma originally played by Gordana Rashovich, won a lively character who plays a role in directing the charity skit. She adds humor to the play as well with her antics. In Part 2, she has a conversation with Feifu about genitals and why people act as if genitals are not there. Her character also recites poems in the play. 1. Paula originally played by Connie Lucurdo Ciccone, 1. is introduced in the play by Emma. She is another friend of Feifu's. Her main lines occur during Part 2 in the kitchen. She has a conversation with Sue on love affairs and how long they last. Sue exits with a tray of bourbon ice cubes and Cecilia Johnson enters. At first the conversation is awkward and then it is revealed that the two have an old romantic relationship together. The act ends as Cecilia reaches for Paula's hand. 1. Sue, originally played by Janet Beale, 1. Another friend of Emma and the other women. She has minor conversations with Julia and Paula and appears as the helpful friend. She tries to give Julia her soup in part 2 and gives Paula advice in part 2. 1. Cecilia, originally played by Joan Vukids, 1. Appears at the end of part 1 as Cecilia Johnson and asks Cindy if she is at the right place for the skit. She had a romantic relationship with Paula and has intimate moments with her throughout the play. She exits the play after the rehearsal is finished. Feifu and her friends is recognized as a feminist play for its all-female cast, six central ideas of gender roles, and its bold deviations from conventional stage presentation and audience involvement. Seven Fornes divides the stage into a kitchen, bedroom, study, and lawn, and a short scene in each area is acted out with a fourth of the audience closely viewing each part. The groups of spectators rotate until they have seen all four scenes. These individual scenes Highlight conflict in all of the women's lives and thus illustrate a more communal feminist struggle than the typical feminist approach of the early days of the second wave of the movement which emphasized the existence and the rights of the individual woman. 7. Forness uses the play as representation of the struggle of women against the female stereotype. Any interactions with male characters are done offstage and no established male characters are seen to portray how women behave when not in the presence of men. 1. 4. 50. Jules Aaron wrote of the play, Feifu and her friends' challenges are preconceptions about life and the theater through boldly drawn women, temporarily divorced from relationships, trying to sort out the ambiguities of their lives. Themes and Motifs Kelda Jordan states that Feifu and her friends illustrates how most women who struggle to escape the confine of a woman's stereotypical role in society tend to believe that the only way to do so is to control her surroundings and those close to her. Women who step too far outside of the boundaries that society has set for them are considered to be overly aggressive, and take on traits that are generally considered to be those of a man, and the women who possess these traits find that they are perceived as having these traits in excess, simply because the traits are exhibited at all. 4. 45. According to David Krasner, the themes of loneliness, isolation and entrapment are strongly present in the play. He says that all women have been constrained in life choices to some extent. Feifu is imprisoned in her unhappy marriage, and because she is a woman, she does not possess the power to escape it, and is beginning to slide deeper into depression. Paula was left some time ago by Cecilia, her lover, and Cindy broke up with a man. Julia received emotional trauma when a deer was shot, suffered convulsions, and is now paralyzed. Julia symbolizes how the other women are trapped in their own way. Feifu and her friends takes place over the course of a single day in the 1930s. Feifu, a seemingly wealthy woman with a nice home, is hosting seven of her friends to plan a fundraiser. For a cause that has something to do with education, the exact cause is never explicitly stated. In part one, Feifu, Cindy, and Christina wait for everyone else to arrive. As they do so, Feifu tells her friends about her relationship with her husband, Philip, whom she thinks married her simply to have a constant reminder of how loathsome women are. Christina, who has never actually met Feifu before, is shocked by this statement, but Feifu doesn't mind, insisting that she likes ideas that are revolting. When Feifu sees Philip walking up to the house, she grabs a shotgun and shoots at him. Cindy and Christina are horrified when Philip falls down, but Feifu assures them they don't need to worry, this is just a joke she and her husband play. Whenever he walks up to the house, she shoots at him with a blank, and he plays along by falling down. As he gets up and continues across the yard, 
Feifu says that Philip has threatened to load the gun with real bullets, but she doesn't believe him. Her friends are bewildered, but it all makes sense to Feifu, who thinks she might end up legitimately shooting Philip if she didn't pretend to. The other women begin to arrive. One of them is Julia, who recently suffered a terrible accident and is now in a wheelchair. As Feifu shows her to her room, Cindy tells Christina about what happened, since she was there to witness it. Julia and Cindy were out hunting with a man. The man spotted a deer and shot it, and right as the deer fell, Julia did too. As the deer died, Julia seemed to suffer alongside it, even convulsing in the same way as the doomed animal. Cindy thought that the hunter had somehow shot Julia, but this wasn't the case. Julia's forehead was bleeding, but only because she had hit her head when she fell, which was perhaps why she was convulsing. She also started raving in a strange way, saying nonsensical things because of some kind of spinal nerve injury. These days, Cindy says, Julia still blanks out because of a scar on her brain, that is, she suffers from petite mal seizures. Emma, one of Cindy and Christina's charismatic and theatrical friends, arrives, interrupting their conversation about Julia's hallucinations, which involve Julia talking about how she is persecuted and tortured. Sue also comes into the room, along with Paula, who compliments Feifu on a flossy crit, a dated term for feminist criticism speech she recently gave somewhere. As everyone settles in, Julia picks up the gun and examines it. She then becomes absent, staring off as Cindy and Cynthia wonder what to do. She remarks that the gun is filled with a blank, and then she cryptically says she's hurting herself. Then, seeming to return to her senses, she decides to go lie down right as Cecilia, Feifu's final guest, arrives. In part two, the play divides into four separate scenes, all of which take place in different rooms at the same time. The audience is broken into four groups and goes from room to room, watching each scene before rotating to the next one. In one scene, Feifu and Emma bring vegetables up. From a root cellar as Emma tells Feifu that she thinks about genitals quite frequently, everyone has them, she says, but they act like they don't. She then sets forth a theory that people go to heaven based on how well they have sex. Feifu likes this idea, but she ends up talking about how she's in a constant state of pain, though this pain isn't physical, it's just that life feels unbearably difficult. In another scene, Christina tells Cindy about how confusing she finds Feifu. Christina is, in some ways, a conformist, so she feels somewhat threatened by Feifu's nonconformism. Cindy then tells her about a dream she had that ended in her being chased by a strange young man. Meanwhile, in yet another scene, Julia lies in a bedroom by herself and narrates a hallucination she's having. She says that a mysterious group of judges have beat and tortured her. When she told them that the stinking parts of the body are the important ones, that is, the genitals, the anus, the mouth, the armpit, one of the judges told her that these body parts have to be kept clean and put away. Later, she insists that these judges are responsible for what happened when the hunter shot the deer. The bullet really hit her, she says, not the deer, but she ended up living while the deer died, at which point the judges told her not to tell anyone what happened. As if speaking directly to these judges, Julia asks why they have to kill Feifu, but they seem to reply by saying, not kill, cure. Cure her. Julia's hallucination stops when Sue brings her some soup. In the fourth scene of part two, Paula and Cecilia talk about a romantic relationship they used to have with each other. They haven't spoken in a while, and it's clear that Paula wants to reconnect, though she insists that she's not trying to win Cecilia back, she just wants to express how much she has missed her and how, abandoned, she felt after Cecilia stopped contacting her. A bit more reluctant than Paula, Cecilia eventually says she has missed Paula, too. In part 3, the women talk about the value of community while lounging in the living room. Julia acknowledges that her hallucinations are madness, but she still often yearns to be around other people who experience the same thing as she does. She has even tried to get admitted to a psychiatric ward, but doctors never send her to one, so she feels isolated amongst people who don't understand what it's like to hallucinate. As this conversation wraps up, the women do a practice run of what each person will talk about at the fundraiser. Emma is the most prepared and theatrically gifted, delivering a speech taken from a book by a female educator and actor named Emma Sheridan Fry. After this rehearsal, the friends have a water fight, with many of them trying to dump water from their glasses on the others. When this dies down, Feifu briefly hallucinates and sees Julia walking into the living room, 
But when she later talks to Julia and encourages her to stand from her wheelchair, Julia says she can't. During this conversation, Julia asks about Feifu's relationship with Philip. Feifu says things aren't going well but that she can't leave Philip because she has come to depend on him. She then tries to get Julia to stand, accusing her of having given up and trying to jostle her out of the chair, though she stops and apologizes when Christina walks in. Having apologized, Feifu grabs the gun and claims she's going to clean it. Once she's out of the room, Julia nervously asks Cecilia, who has also entered the room, if she Julia told Feifu anything, but Cecilia doesn't know what she's talking about and asks what, exactly, Julia would have told Feifu. In response, Julia just says, she knew. Then, from outside, comes the sound of a gunshot. Christina and Cecilia go to see what happened, but Julia just touches her forehead. Her hand comes away bloody, and then her head drops backward. Feifu rushes in with a dead rabbit, exclaiming that she shot and killed it. When she sees Julia slumped in her wheelchair, Feifu slowly walks to her, at which point the rest of the women enter and all stand around her, too. From the very beginning of the play, it's clear that Feifu likes to rankle her friends by making provocative statements. She wants, it seems, to get a rise out of Cindy and Christina when she says that her husband married her to remind himself how loathsome women are. At the same time, though, it's worth noting that this idea, regardless of whether or not it's intentionally provocative, highlights the fraught gender dynamics at play in Feifu's life. Even if it's not true that her husband married her as a reminder of how loathsome women are, there must be some kind of animosity and sexism in their relationship, otherwise it's unlikely that she would think to say such a startling thing about her marriage. Feifu now confirms that she likes to say challenging things. However, it becomes clear that she doesn't do this solely out of a desire to shock her friends, rather, she wants to challenge herself, as evidenced by her assertion that she likes ideas that give her something to grapple with. She is, then, somebody who doesn't shy away from difficult ideas or conversations, which is perhaps why she's willing to think so cynically about the gender dynamics at play in her marriage. Feifu and Her Friends is a play by Cuban-American playwright Maria Irene Fornes. It premiered in 1977 at the Relativity Media Lab, a small venue on New York's Lower East Side. Set in 1935 New England, the play concerns a group of women who knew one another in college and gather for a reunion as adults. Within six months, Feifu was produced off-Broadway at the American Place Theater, earning Fornes her second Obie Award. Over the course of Fornes's career as a playwright, spanning about 40 years between the early 1960s and 2001, she wrote about 50 plays and was a pioneer in the U.S. avant-garde theater movement. Feifu is one of her most well-known plays and has been lauded as a seminal text in feminist theater and a significant part of the American theater canon in the 20th century. Fornes explained that she was inspired to write Feifu and her friends by an old Mexican joke. Twimen are a bullfight, and one comments to the other about an attractive woman. The other asks which woman he is talking about and the first points his gun, shoots, and replies, that one. Feifu's all-woman cast places all of the male characters offstage, highlighting the ways that each woman in the play is controlled and damaged by patriarchal society and the constriction of gender roles. Feifu and her friends investigates the way oppression affects these women's lives and their relationships with one another.